so let's talk one more thing, how we, how we populate the routes in, in uh, the layer 3 VNI. Um, so like I said, instead of flood and learn, we're flood and route. We're flood and announce. So here's our switch. We've got some local interfaces. We have our uh, VXLAN interface. It's, it, it, it's not a physical port, but it, it acts like a physical port. And then we've got our SVI for our uh, SVI port for our default gateway. Um, so when a host, when a host is connected, and this device learns about it, so we've got our layer three VNI here, or layer two VNI, MacFur, which is also a local VLAN, LAN ten. When we learn about a new endpoint, we generate a type two route. The type two route actually has both the IP and MAC information. So it's gonna be, so the IP address, do this in blue. Typically do layer three things in blue. IP address is gonna be 101111. And um, the MAC address is going to be 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Zero 01. Yep, so, you know, because I don't want to write a whole thing. <laughs> yep. And it's going to have a sequence number, and that's for uh, vMotion. So that way, if, if this VM, or if this host moves to another leaf, the leaf is going to say, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to generate this route, but I already know where it is. It's somewhere else. So that must mean a vMotion has occurred, so I generate a route with a higher, I increment the sequence number. But The vMotion, okay, just, we just got to comment on that. There's a type yeah. 2 route with, a, with metadata in it that is so commonly used for vMotion that that got written into the standard? Or is it just the sequence number could be used for anything and it so happens that the, the way it's leveraged in a vMotion environment is that the sequence number gets advanced? I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if it was added on specifically for data center or not. Hmm. I, I have no idea. I can't even speculate. I would imagine possibly it was already there, but it needed to be there for uh, vMotion. And again, the sequence number being we during a vMotion event, we've got this thing living in a couple of different places, and we need to know that it's 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 being moved actively. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were talking about the so the leaf when it learns about an endpoint, it's going to note its MAC address and IP address. There may be some cases where it doesn't have an IP address; it's purely MAC based. But most of the time, we're going to learn a MAC address and IP address, and we're going to generate a type two route. The type two route has uh, both the IP and MAC in it. It's going to get sent out to whatever peers that we have, and then we'll get distributed based on whatever EBGP or IBGP or have, have, uh, one of those two. The IP address will always get installed. Man, I should not have uh, done it slanted like that. <laughs> Let me just rewrite this so it's not slanted so I can. Uh, copy it better. So the IP address we learn ten one one eleven uh, slash thirty two because it's a host route, and then the MAC address we learn also, which will be zero 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 and a one, and there's going to be a route target on this. And the route target's going to be based on uh, which VNI, which local VLAN we, we uh, mapped it to. Um, so all the leafs that have the same layer 2 VNI that correspond to the route target. So let's say this is 10,001. And the segment numbers can be from 1 to 16,777,214, right. I think. But, you know. I'm not going to write that many numbers. Um, and then we have the layer three VNI. Yeah, I remember discussions with VXLAM uh, designers when it was just becoming a thing, and the whole point was to yeah, you don't, you're never going to run out of VNIs, no matter what your scale is. That was kind of the point of why that VNI number could be so big. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the host route gets installed into the layer 3 VNI, and then the MAC route gets installed into the layer 2 VNI. So the host route goes into the IP verf, layer, uh, the MAC address goes into the MAC verf, mm -hmm. into those discrete forwarding spaces. Now, they're not configured like VRFs like we normally configure on a switch, but we're basically we're treating the VLAN as a layer 2, as a, as a MAC VRF. And then we've got that separate layer three uh, via uh, la the layer three IP verf as a as a discrete forwarding space. So those are those three discrete forwarding spaces I was talking about earlier, which are um, where we throw everything into. And then mm -hmm. if I had if I had Kirk and Picard, Kirk would have a layer three um, IP verf, and then Picard would have a different layer three IP verf to route between the different layer two segments between them. Thank <laughs> you.